right? The guilty verdict's gone. New record. All that stuff, that whole documentation of sin and activity in life, it doesn't exist anymore, right? God says, you, when I look at this, I see a righteous man, all right? Second thing. What happened at that cross? Jesus died. Then what? He was resurrected. New life. Resurrected. New life. So here's what he wants you to know about the cross. You died with him. And you came into a new life. Just like him. Now, listen. This is not Danny gets a do-over. Right? Because... It's not, it's not like, oh, I messed up, let me start all over. Oh, I messed up, let me start all over, right? Reset, reset, reset. No, right? Because it was Danny's life here. The old man died. New life. His life. Yeah. He gave me his life. What does that look like? This new Danny. His righteousness. His acceptance, his spirit, his perfection, his holiness, right? So here's that, in that new life, right? It's not yours. It's his in you, right? Oh, get this, guys. Get this. Then what? <laughs> he said, you will reign with me. He no, lo lo no longer calls you servant, but, anybody know? Calls me friend. Yeah. He says, you're my son. You're my daughter. Right? There's a privilege that you've just been given. A co-heir to reign with him. What, is, what does that look like? <laughs> I just, I've been given authority all of a sudden. He wants you to know this. When you died and came into this new life in him, he, he literally rewrote you. <laughs> you have the capacity to not sin. And he gave you authority to walk in that. The three R's. Redemption, you're not guilty. New life. Resurrection. Your life is his life. You have a new life. And he gave you authority. So when we start talking about, you know, crushing the enemy, stomping on his head, all of a sudden when I'm over here and I'm plucking out things of heaven and connecting it with things here that are broken, that all starts to make sense. Mm -hmm. But what's going to happen over here? I'm going to get in there. I've got, I'm this new man. I've got this new life. The enemy's going to say, those three R's, that never happened to you. Because the only trick he's got in his bag is to lie to you. Mm -hmm. And to get you to believe something that's not true. Mm -hmm. The cross did that for you. He wants you to believe that never happened. So the only game he's got, when you, when you say, no, I've been redeemed... I don't have a guilty record anymore. He says, oh yeah, but let me tell you about your past. Da, da, da. He was, he's going to remind you of that. So I've got this job over here. You have this job over here, right? That's why I love church and I love being with you guys. Because when you're struggling over here, someone that's in this culture with you is going to go, knock it off. That's not you. That's a lie. And you go, oh yeah. Right? And we need to be reminding each other, that's a lie. Here's what Satan wants to do. I'm, 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 this was easy. This is all I ever knew was to live on this side of the wall. All my thought patterns, my language, my habits were all formed over here. So all of a sudden, I come across, I come through this door with the cross and Jesus, and I'm over here. I'm still thinking that way. So I've, I'm trying to, I'm, I need to learn how to think differently. That's why I love Romans 12 too. Be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? So you could do something. You can prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. 
right? You're doing this. That's his will, right? I have to think differently, guys. So the enemy's, his, his number one game plan is get you to doubt that you've, been, that you've been redeemed. Then he wants you to doubt this whole thing about you, that Christ living in you, right? That Christ is in me, the hope of glory for the world right here. He says, I'm his temple, right? And I have all this authority. All he wants to do is get you to say, no, 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 no. It's the only game he's got, guys. It's the only game he's got is to lie to you. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So that's what this looks like over here. You look through the window and you see, you see Becky and you see Philip and you see Dar right? You're seeing, you're, you're seeing him over here and like, oh, they talk crazy sometimes, but oh, I'm starting to see what this is about, right? Righteousness, peace, and joy. Righteousness. He took care of your sin problem. Peace. He took care of your torment problem. Joy, he took care of your sickness problem. Physical healing. The Bible says laughter is good medicine. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Okay, I want in here. How do I get in? God says, you come here. And he tells us this. He says to repent. I should have said four hours, huh? <laughs> repent. He tells us to repent. You go, oh, great. I knew it. Yeah. Now, now I'm going to have to pull my list out and do what? Oh, I did this on October 12, 1997. I did this. I, no. Repentance isn't about running a list and saying, God, I'm sorry. God, I'm sorry for this. God, I'm sorry for that. Oh, I don't want to ever do that again. I'm sorry for this. Right? That's not what repentance is. Repentance, it's, it's a Greek word. It's, it's metanoia in the, in the New Testament. And it means change your mind. Literally change your mind. My God box thought this way. God says, let me tell you, this, what, this is what the cross did for you. That's what this culture looks like in the kingdom of God. Repentance says, oh, God, I agree. Repentance is saying, I'm not thinking this way anymore. I'm thinking your way, God. I'm thinking about redemption and resurrection and reigning. Repentance is coming into agreement with the three R's. But it's not just the mind game. I believe, I believe, I believe. That didn't happen. I believe, I believe, I believe. No. It's, <laughs> right? Repentance says, agree with what he said. Agree with what he did. Now step that way. Correct. Step towards that way. Yes. Right? So I can be out here all day long going, thank you, Jesus. What you did, thank you. And it's like, man, repentance says, I'm agreeing with what you did on the cross, and I am stepping in. I want this identity makes sense right here family yep. this is where it makes sense mm -hmm. and the enemy all he wants to do is get you over here <clears throat> why do we put this all this identity stuff in front of you right never i've seen a lot you've seen these movies with uh somebody loses their memory <clears throat> and it's like a boyfriend girlfriend kind of thing and there's been an accident, and he, and he doesn't remember. Oh, I don't remember. Who are you? You're my wife, right? <laughs> Have you ever seen one of those? I just saw one. I don't know the name of it, but I just saw one of those. I think it was, she lost her memory. Maybe it was. What do they do? I'm going to take her to familiar places. I'm going to play her favorite songs. I'm going to, oh, we like to do this. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to cause her to remember, to say, oh, yeah, that's who I am. <laughs> when we put in front of you, identity, here's who you are, this is what you're all about, right? We're, what we're doing is we're trying to help your mind think differently because you, you were designed, right, to be one of these guys. <laughs> Access heaven, touch earth, right? You're a conduit, you're an agent, a broker for heaven, right? A kingdom agent, that's who you, were, that's who you are. We continue to put identity in front of you and say, you're this, you're this, you're this. So go to my next slide.